Nigerian businesses are adjusting to a poor populace from FMCGs and real estate to insurance and aviation. More businesses in Nigeria are making efforts to adjust their products and services to serve the largest segment of the lower income scale of the economy. The marketing strategy, which is increasingly being adopted by many companies to increase their sales by targeting low income earners, signals again Nigeria's rising poverty rate. Joining us to discuss further, Ugo Aliogo, who is a public policy analyst. Ugo, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, yesterday, yeah. I mean, if you were flipping through, I think we have a video of, if you were flipping through the headlines from yesterday, yes. it was, it was every, single, it was every single paper is talking about the World Bank report. The World Bank It was report. really frustrating. I mean, really uh, yeah, yeah. So, but again, I wasn't surprised when I saw it. I wasn't surprised. That's the World Bank's estimate of 7 it, million people yes, falling I wasn't, into. Yes, I wasn't, I wasn't surprised. Why I said I wasn't really surprised is that our economy has been in recession. Mm. And then when I said this on this program that we ride on, this government ride on metric and numbers, and then some people were after me, they were after my life, <laughs> you know. And why I said the government ride on metrics and numbers was that the, they said in March that we had exited recession. Mm. And then the indicators and the signals was that we're still in recession. Food inflation accounted for 70% mm. of the inflation that was facing Nigeria. And then we had widespread unemployment, the aftermath of the COVID-19 lockdown, the aftermath of the NSAS protests. A lot of SMEs they were vandalized. A lot of shops were vandalized. A lot of businesses were lost during the NSAS protests. And then during the lockdown, a lot of businesses couldn't revitalize. They couldn't go back. And then there was a fund launched by the federal government, $3.1 fund that was launched to help SMEs to revitalize. There were many SMEs that didn't have access to this equity financing. So all of this put together points to negative signals. And then we have a white, a, with the issue of insecurity. It's a major problem facing this country. And then because of that, a lot of farmers can't go to their, they can't go to their farms. Right, true. And then we can't have access to food, food produce. And then the little they're able to have, because of, because of the, the risk they take, the prices are escalated. Right, yeah, the pr a crate of eggs. Uh, what, it was 800 Naira a year ago. It's 1,005. 1,005. 1,006. That's 100%. That's just eggs. Even so, consumer goods now are increasing by the day. Which is squeezing, it's squeezing. The, the, the populace. Yeah. So, 70% yeah. inflationary rate on food alone. Well, no, 22.8%. 70%. No, I mean, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, 22. Point, I mean, the, yeah. the, for food inflation. That's right, what I mean. Right, right, uh, yeah, exactly. Right. 70%. That's what they account for. Okay, yeah, of the basket. Thank yes, you. Of thank the basket. Of the basket. Of yeah, the so basket. that's what they account for. Okay, so. We don't want to wail and wail and talk yes. about the call. So what about the solutions? How do, we, how do we fix it, Ugo? You're a public policy analyst, so give us the answers. Now, there were, there were indicators yeah. or there were solutions yeah. rather, that the World Bank um, suggested. Okay. There was the exchange rates, MSME and job creation, fiscal policy, monetary, monetary policy, policy right? trade, and right. all of and all that. that. Right. When I was on this show, I think, two weeks ago, okay. yeah, I can't remember, okay. then the federal government launched the Poverty Reduction Growth Strategy. That's true. That is correct. Now, when they launched the growth, um, Poverty Growth Reduction Strategy, yep. the Presidential Economic Advisory Council, they brought out recommendations you, on how to, to fix this economy. That. Bingo. You're right. They and then one, do that. And then one of topmost of the um, World Bank uh, re recommendation is exchange rates. Okay. And then they talked about the need to communicate effect. They need to communicate um, effective management um, exchange rates. Yep, yep, that yep. communicates. That is in line with the NIFEX exchange rates. Right. Which the central bank has done. Which the central bank has done. They've done that. And yeah. and that is in tandem with what the presidential economic advisory team said. That is need to have a unified and a competitive exchange rates. True. True. The bottom line of what the World Bank said regarding the knife knife exchange rate mm. was to make it more competitive and reduce inflation. Okay. And then Why? so so my own my own uh, dissatisfaction with this whole thing is with, with the with this whole thing is that are we gonna wait for the big brother? The oh, World we, Bank. Okay. Why don't we localize our problem? The presidential economic advisory team is the body that is set. They made some recommendations. Why is it that these recommendations are not being implemented? Uh -huh. Why is it that we are not fight, we are, we are not tackling the recommendations they put in place? Okay, so so what you're what you're saying is we we have all the we're good at writing out the issue. What, the, what, we're good at writing out the, the the solutions. Yes. But the problem is to actually put them into to action. To implement it. 
Okay, so what's, why, why aren't they doing that? Is that because, look, look at the petroleum industry bill. We've been talking about that for 14 years. This continued, um, well, look at today's headline on today's this day. Oil prices are nearing $75 a barrel, which means that um, the landing cost of fuel is going up. The Labor, landing cost. Labor and the government are still talking about deregulation of the downstream. So, so we don't seem to be moving fast enough. Is that, is that the issue? We don't seem to be moving fast enough. That's one problem. Okay, okay. And then we have been preaching the issue of diversifying revenue sources. True. It's still oil. It's still oil. oil, oil Nigeria oil, remains oil. a mono economy. Right. And then we still remain import dependent until we look at diversifying revenue sources, look at backward integration. You see, I'm glad you made that distinction. Nigeria's economy is diversified, but the issue is the revenue sources Diversified are not... revenue sources. Uh -huh. Why don't we go back to agri? Why don't we look at tech? Until we fix these things, until we address the structural deformities in this economy, we'll still be grappling around the same problem. We'll still be going around the same vicious circle. Mm. Our, eco our economy has also been, uh, always been in recession. We have always yeah. had inflation. Right. Always, so we just come up with numbers. We come up with metrics. Uh, we have existed recession. You never, why don't you ever have faith in those figures? We have existed recession. We existed Q4 2020. <laughs> if, if you say, 0.11%. If you say you visited recession, yeah. what, what are the indicators? So you now, know, what bank came out and said, this is the amount. million that fell, yes, fell into poverty. That, well, that, was into poverty. COVID, that was COVID and a number of other issues. But we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not only the country that were, that, that were affected by COVID. There were a lot yeah. of countries. And then many economies are bouncing back. So why, why are we having sluggish growth? May, are you, excellent point. So you're saying that we're not feeling it. And we're not feeling the exit. I would want to get your take on businesses, SMEs that are restructuring and, I guess, reducing the amount of products that they sell in order to cater to the lower income. Is that them recognizing... The reality on ground that this, the, 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 the populace is poor, they, so we they, have to reduce our. They recognize and, the reality on ground. Why right. they recognize the reality on ground is because purchasing power is low. Right. Right. So because purchasing power is low, yeah. if you produce, if you mass produce, then you will not sell as you much won't as sell. You, right. You will make a loss. You make a loss. Right. And then if you make a loss, then you'll be out of business. Right. And that's, that's, that's what made many SMEs to be out of business. So when you produce, you, you have to consider the purchasing power of the ordinary consumer mm. buying your product. Mm. So you have to reduce. Then you repackage. You make sure it meets the market. Because you're producing for the local market. You're not producing for the international market. Right. We're not even talking about after. We're not talking about what we're going to launch in after. We've got, we have no That's soft... after for our viewers. African yes, continental yes, African for free trade. Free trade. Yeah, yeah. We have not even talked of how to fix the immediate problem we have. Mm. Mm. So why do you now have the Presidential Economic Advisory Team if you can follow their recommendations? And that's a So start. must we wait for the that's big brother, the, the, the World Bank... To tell us what we already know. Let, that is... World Bank, they are talking from their own survey and analysis... The presidential economy, they are in this country. They understand the, they understand the problem. They understand the matrix. They understand what to do. Okay. And that's a star-studded economic team. That, that's that's a star-studded economic team. Doing salami, Bismarck. They, these are people that have, been, yeah. that have been in this country for years. They understand everything. Mm. They know the workings of the economy. Mm. I think it's high time we look at their recommendations. Much of what the World Bank said is even... Already... Is, is, is already what the presidential economic advice okay, so, said. So, so what's the problem? They just... <laughs> Is it a lack, uh, Chika Mbono, a rise business analyst from Abuja, was talking about a lack of political will. Is that, is that what it is? Now, not just lack of political will. Now, this is a government that lives in denial. You have a problem, you don't want to confront it. Mm. Do you have faith in, there's only less than a, two years to go. By next, okay, that's yes. another problem. We only have a minute to go, but very quickly, from yes. next year, yes. a lot of focus is going to be on elections. Exactly. Is there any, do you have any faith that we can see any reforms passed between now and, like, you know, the end of the year, or do you think any quickly? Do you think any you can expect to see any reforms passed when 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 election season hits hits up in Africa's largest economy? My my fear again is not to run on metrics and numbers. Right. Let's implement the ones we have launched. Mm. That's and just that's just my own take. Let's just implement. Follow what you've already yes, put. Yes. Follow what. There's no need to launch more. There's, let's just implement what we have launched. Ugo Aliogo, public policy, and Ugo, it's always great having you on. It was pleasure. Fiery interviews with you.